because the purpose of these applications are for um, data collection, and it does help us when we're writing our grant, and we are renewing our grant. Um, yeah, so when you look at the bottom, it says part E, academic information, it says high school or college level. Just look at the college level and what English are you or math level you're at. If you've already completed your math and English, go ahead and put one one in school, whichever class you completed already. Okay. And then in part F and G, it does say required for students under 18, but go ahead and still do it because this is this is still information we need for our data collection and especially part d your emergency co emergency contact information is this your slide yeah. okay. and in part h you see the code of conduct these are basically um the rules that you as mentees will um adhere by so when you come to project pro out we respect you guys so we expect the same from our 2 ds and mentees. And in the back, if you're under the age of 18, you need to have your parents sign this application. So you can take this home, have your parents sign it, and bring it back. But if you are 18 and above, you can go ahead and sign it, date it, and I can collect it from you. So that's all. Does anyone have any questions for the application? So uh, good morning everyone, my name is Kane and I'm a mentor at Project Pro. Uh, so today my presentation will be on time management. Uh, so I would like to ask you guys, uh, what do you guys think time management is? What is, what is your definition of time management? Uh, you should have a lot to answer. Yeah, so what is the definition of time management? No? Okay. Uh, Okay. That one? Oh. Managing your time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Google defines time management as like uh, it's the process of planning and exercising conscious control of time. Uh, I'll spend on uh, specific activities, especially to increase effectiveness, efficiency, and productivity. So in this in this picture, um. What do you think, or how would you describe this picture, this image? What do you think is going on? Fighting against time. Yeah, fighting against time. Um, so he, as you can see, he's trying to push back the, the hand of the clock. He's trying to reverse time because time is a non-renewable resource. You can't reverse time. You can't uh, speed up time. <coughs> so why is time management important? Uh, to me, time management is important because it teaches you how to be responsible and more organized. So how does time management help us as college students? Uh, it allows us to accomplish more in a shorter period of time, which creates more free time for us. And with this free time, we could do activities to help release stress, like play sports, games, exercise, um, meditate. It allows us to plan ahead. So by planning ahead, you could space out time or space out whatever you need to do. Say for an assignment that's to do and it's an important assignment, you know when the deadline is, uh, you know how long it will take to finish this assignment. So you could turn it on time and it will be a quality uh, assignment. So, making time for upcoming events, say like you have an important uh, family member, like a birthday party coming up, make sure you, in a schedule, you list out <coughs> the time and day that an event's gonna occur. Uh, time management also allows us to be more productive throughout uh, our day. So for me, uh, at the end of the day, I like to see what I, like I make a list of what I did, like for what classes, so I don't, I don't lose, um, I don't lose my mind, my mindset on what I need to do and what I need to, or what I finished. So I like making a list and it makes me feel better knowing that 
I have finished uh, a long list of assignments before the due date, so I have more time to work on myself. So our activity today is a priority clock. Uh, what you're gonna do is, on a scale of one to five, you're gonna put how or like how well did you spend your time doing these things? So one being the lowest and five being the highest. I'm gonna have Trish pass it up. Oh, if you guys want to use this for your graphic organizer that we were talking about, it that's fine too. Oh, and at the end of the, at the end of, you've just seen it, could you calculate your score? So as you guys fill that out, um, the highest score you can get on this is uh, 30, and I just want to like hear your guys' overall scores, basically, if mm that's -hmm. curious. So who wants, who wants to go first and tally the overall score? Because I got, I got a 20 on my own. So as you can see, like uh, majority of my time is mostly spent with family. And school. I don't really do with that much um, extracurricular uh, curricular activities or procrastination. But I do a lot of self care too. So, anyone wants to like, share their. Mine was 19. 19. So, what was the most. Uh, school. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, it's work and. What was your least? Uh, least? Um, Extracurricular. Yeah. I don't know. Extracurricular. Uh, yeah, I was the one. Uh, anyone else would like to share your overall score? Uh, so my highest one would be school. Procrastination kind of go hand in hand. You know, you can't manage your time properly if you procrastinate too much. And I'll just like be giving the effects on procrastination. So, according to an article posted in 2018 by the American Psychological Association, 80 to 95 percent of college students procrastinate. That's, that's a high number. Um, how procrastination affects your grades? Uh, procrastination. Uh, Procrastinating most of the time uh, results in bad grades and a lot, of, a lot more stress. It causes frustration, anxiety, and research shows that college students who procrastinate uh, show more anxiety, frustration, and stress compared to students who don't procrastinate. 
procrastination also uh, can cause lack of sleep. So college students on average get six to six point nine hours of sleep per night during like the college semester, and some even get lower than six hours of sleep, and which is not good for your health. And how can you uh, like, how can you pay attention in class if you're tired, you know, and stuff like that? So it does affect your your college life. It also um, affects your health issues, and not getting enough sleep, not drinking enough water, not eating right, can uh, make you more prone to catch like the cold, like the flu, stuff like that. So always keep in mind like you have to have sleep, drink water, and be healthy. So here are some benefits of sleeping well. Uh, it relieves stress and improves your mood and energy. It like keeps your body healthy and you get a health, uh, maintain a healthy weight. It makes your muscles uh, coordination better and it allows you to your body to rest. And it improves your attention span in class. And so here are some ways to help practice time management. So planners, they're like little book or like books that. Like little calendars where you can mark important dates and stuff. Um, setting a schedule and sticking to it. Most of the time, I have a bad habit of setting a schedule and I, I don't stick to it. But I'm trying to work on that now. Um, prior, uh, plan ahead and prioritize important workloads or activities. Getting enough sleep. Uh, calendars now, they have online calendars where you can put dates and when that date arrives, it will ring or set, like, set off an alarm. So that's a good way too of managing your time. Um, also, I'd like to throw in that the mentorship program is having a game night on March 11, and it's going to be at the archives. It's from 6 o'clock to 8 p.m. And this is also a good stress reliever too, you know. Uh, our college is kind of stressful. So this is a good way. And there will be like snacks and stuff there provided by Project Pro. So if you guys want, you guys can show up. It's located at the archives near the library. And yeah, that's it. Anyone have any questions? Okay. Uh, so today, you know, we're, this week, this is what we're working on, time management. And we're working on monthly, weekly, daily schedules. Um, what do you see, now that you've been at the college for a while, what type of scheduling calendars and uh, graphic charts seem to be most beneficial to you and why? Uh, I like putting a uh, specific assignments to uh, different classes on sticky notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I keep it in my, on my binder. So whenever I use my binder, I see what assignments I need to do and when they're due. And I put them like on different colors, so uh, Whichever color it's on, that's how important it is. And oh, it so you have a color coding. Yeah. 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 That's something I just that's And it works really yeah. well. It works really well. Yeah. 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 So you don't want to have bad grades because you're paying for your classes. So time management is really important. Do not procrastinate because you will regret it the next day. One time, I procrastinated in an essay. That was for my English 202 class, who was Miss Anderson. And let me tell you, I had an anxiety attack the morning I woke up because I completely forgot about it. And it was like an eight-page essay. So manage your time. Plan what you need to do, especially if you know you want to go out on a Saturday. If you have an essay due Saturday at 11.59 p.m., do it on Wednesday. At least your draft. And then what I do personally now is I have a planner. So I would scratch out what I already did. And it makes me feel good because it just shows you that you were productive. And it's like, oh, wow, I did this amount of work done in this amount of time. So it's really satisfying for you as well. Yeah. If you have any applications, I can pick it up. I'm surveys, I pass it out to you guys, so yeah. 
Um, can I ask you a couple of questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, like I said, this week we're working on time management. Um, also finances. Do you guys have any financial tips for the students in regards to saving money or planning ahead with money while they're in college? Since you mentioned that they're paying. Don't go out every day. Don't. Don't buy food every breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you can cook at home, do so. Be yeah, because if you think about it, like when I was a freshman, I spent $5 breakfast, lunch, and dinner because I was a college student and I was, I'm alone here in Saipan. So it was $15 a day times five, that would be about $60 a week. So when you think about that, $60 times four is 120, 100, no. Is it? <laughs> 240. 240. <laughs> yeah, $240 a month. Imagine what you can what you can do with that. That money could have gone to my tuition or it could have gone to like books, textbooks. Oh my goodness. Yes, textbooks. <laughs> and textbooks are super expensive. Check Facebook if you want a textbook. Don't go to the bookstore. They rip you off. <laughs> okay. But if you need a good one. Can go ahead. It's an advice that's from a college student to a college student. And if you need any more like tips and tricks around the college, Kane is a mentor. He can guide you on that. Um, that's what mentors are for. Even me, I'm a tutor, but I'm also a mentor. So we can come to the archives and we have more um, advice for you guys. Because college does get hard. It's easy now, you think. Then once you get into the harder classes, you're going to be like, oh my god, I learned about this in college success. I didn't pay attention that much. Yeah. Any questions? Let's give them a big hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.